Hey everyone, welcome to JPS Film Studios. Today I'll be doing a tutorial from the film that I just made, Rift, and I'll be doing a tutorial on the visual effects shot at the end when subconscious subconscious shatters into pieces. So let's begin, alright. So first, what you're going to want to do is get your clips that you have um, for whichever is shattering. So for me, it's going to be subconscious, and he's standing in the hall, and I'm going to trim it so that I get rid of the first part because I only need him standing there looking around, and then it's going to shatter. So I'm just going to trim that so that it's just me, and then we'll move on to getting the clean plate and the alpha channel. Bam. And then I'm going to get a clean plate just like now. Now this is very important, if you don't have a clean plate, then your effects probably won't work very well at all. So I'm just going to rename this, what, tutorial, sub shutters, yep. And this clean plate will allow us to create the effect, go from 2D to 3D. Okay, so, we've created the clean plate, so now what we're going to do is, we're going to import the clean plate into the shot but we'll do that in a moment we're just making sure that we go back to exactly where we need so now we're going to be creating a uh, well a non-clean plate of the shot but just a freeze frame of subconscious standing there and then what we're going to do with that is we're going to mask out to subconscious himself and we use that as the Alright, so now we're going to get our clips that we just exported with the freeze frames, the clean plate, the subconscious plate, and the. We already have a normal clip. So we'll get those now out of Finder, just drag those in, and we'll place the clean plate directly after um, our clip ends so that it looks like subconscious is disappearing into nowhere. But he will actually be shattering, which is why we need to create an alpha plate which is what we'll do in a moment. So we're going to create a new composite shot and we're going to be placing in the, um, the plate with subconscious in him with the subconscious in it uh, by itself. So now what we're going to do is just mask around. So I'll speed up the uh, clip because this takes me a while. You're going to want to make it a little detailed but you know it's going to be there for a couple of seconds so it's not going to be any... Okay so we're just finishing off the mask now and there we go, I've just finished it. So now what we're going to do is just adjust some edges. Oops, whoops. Bit of a lag on the computer. When there's a lot of mask points, it gets kind of laggy. Alright, so now what we're going to do is put a mask onto the, um, onto the layer so that we just don't have as many hard edges. Sorry about the dog in the background, sorry. Um, yeah, so just put a mask on there, just 1.5 will do, you know, nothing too high barely noticeable but it actually does help a little bit with reducing the hard edges so now we're going to export this I oh, can't spell properly today put um, just the alpha alpha layer of tutorial because um, it's tutorial and for subconscious so now we're going to save that to save the project as well uh, it's very important you save the project otherwise if it crashes or your computer crashes then you'll lose everything alright so now we're in Cinema 4D here and we're going to be creating the 3D side of the effect, which is, which is the shattering of subconscious. So, first what you're going to need to do is bring in all of your layers, our backgrounds. So, clean plate background, subconscious background, and the alpha background for subconscious. Uh, and these are um, very important to make sure you match up the scene exactly how it is in the clip. So, first you're going to create an, uh, an background, an environment, a background. And you're going to line up your floor plane with the shot as best as you can. Um, if this is a handheld shot you're doing, then you're going to need to use the motion tracker. But otherwise, stationary is all good. Now you're going to create a spline around your actor. So in my case, subconscious. Um, just using the Bezier spline tool. And yes, so I'll speed this clip up. Actually, no, it's alright. I'm almost done. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's very important. This part isn't needed to have fine detail. It's pretty rough. Try and try and you know get around the edges as much as you can. 
uh, but it's going to be a quick clip. You won't even notice it for very long. It depends on what you're doing though. Alright, so finish off the spline there. Now, what you're going to want to do is go up into the um, next to the spline tool. You're going to get the extrude tool, um, extrude, and place an extrude object and place this spline into the extrude object. Then you're going to click on the spline onto the extrude and make it into an object. So you're going to connect the spline and the object and the extrude together to make a object of your actor. So you're going to want to connect all the caps with the extrude and combine them. So this makes a one solid object, no caps, no in between, not hollow, just one object. Now what you're going to do is get your texture of the alpha that we created and place it on top. Go to flat and this is kind of annoying but you have to stretch out your texture which is tiled at the moment. You have to stretch it out to where you want it. Um, I've previously, do previously done this so I've made the coordinates myself but otherwise you're just going to have to stretch it out until it fits your actor, your um, extrude object. So the length U and length V is how you change the height and, and the length uh, and the offset U and the offset V are how you move the, um, the actual texture itself. So it just takes me a little couple of seconds because I've already got the coordinates down but if you are doing this from scratch it may take you up to a couple of minutes or so. It depends. So once you've done that, um, that's about as best as I could get it for the time being. You know, I, I, I like to fiddle with these because try to get as good as you can. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have to leave it like that. All right, which I will do. I will leave mine like this because it's, it's pretty good like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get a Voronoi fracture and you're going to place the um, object of your actor into the Voronoi fracture. Now you've got the colors um, on the Voronoi fracture so you can just leave those. Create a floor and go to the floor, put it underneath the background and go rigid body. Um, and go to the Voronoi fracture and also create a rigid body. Now you may notice that when the um, body shatters, it's thin, the pieces are thin. So what you're going to want to do is go to your Voronoi. Um, first, we're going to change the amount of pieces in the Voronoi fracture. So I changed mine to about 75, uh, which is probably enough for now. And then you're going to want to go to your object. And you'll notice that it's still paper thin. So you're going to go to optimize and close holes, and there you go. You've got chunks of uh, polygons just falling and shattering. So that's what you want. You don't want paper thin. You want the um, chunks of polygons, unless you do want paper thin. Uh, I'm going to change the point amount to about 110 because that's the better option to go there. Now you're going to change your background from the plate with subconscious in it to the plate with um our subconscious so the clean plate is what you're going to put on then you're going to also put that clean plate onto the floor um so that you can catch shadows you're going to put a compositing tag onto it and then you're going to tick compositing background option then we're going to create a light and move that light up to suit the environment turn shadows on for a better effect now obviously it's going to look a little weird at first adjusting the light um, is very important. You're also probably going to want to change the shadows um, maybe a little denser to s or less to suit your environment but for me I haven't done that yet I'm just gonna leave that for now. Um, but I've basically adjusted the shadow to where I want it to be and that's it for now. Next um, what we're gonna do is create a force that's going to be pushing the um, your actor or your objects in my case subconscious forward to shadow because we don't want to, to, to just fall so I'm going to put a cube in and I'm going to go to my top view because this is always better to work in top view to make sure that you're getting everything nice and precise 
Um, so you're going to move your cube out and change the size of it. I'm going to I'll make it editable, ed editable, and then change the size on the x uh, the z axis. Once you've done that, actually that's no, the x axis. Yes, I'm going to change the height as well and move it up a bit. So this will be the force pushing the pieces forward. Uh, now I'm going to create a little animation here of the cube coming forwards on our rectangle and put a tag onto it seen by camera. You don't want it to be seen ca by camera. Neither do you want it to cast shadows or receive any shadows at all. It has to practically be invisible. Uh, put a sorry, put a rigid body tag onto it and change it to um, dynamic off. Then you're going to put a go into the Voronoi fracture and you're going to go and change the rigid body animation to uh, the trigger to on collision because you don't want the Voronoi fracture to um, work until it's hit by the cube. So now I'm just taking some renders of it and it doesn't look like the final shot in the film and this shot won't look like the same one in the film. Um, I'm just doing a more basic version of it. However, it's very similar to the final shot. Um, if you do want to change the length and width of the cube, you're going to have to delete the rigid body tag and also its keyframes and start over again, unfortunately. But that's how it is. So that's why it's better to get your final shape uh, before you keyframe and add rigid body. But it's not too much work to change. Um, I forgot to rotate it. Got to do that quickly. Just rotate. Go back to the first frame. And rotate it. But yes. So um, this part isn't too important. It is. It might be. It depends on what your shot is. But otherwise, this is just to simulate uh, some force coming behind subconscious and smashing him into pieces. Uh, this could also be like someone punching someone else and they shatter into pieces. You would do this for that to simulate the force. Uh, maybe not as fast, but you know, something along these lines. Next, um, you're going to want to add a rigid body to the uh, shattering object and turn off dynamic so that it doesn't um, have its own dynamic properties apart from knocking over other dy dynamic objects. Um, we're going to change the point amount to 250 um, to add more in. And we're getting a pretty good result right now. Except the head isn't shattering. Um, but that's an easy fix. I'm actually not sure how to do that in terms of rigid, but I know that what I just do is go into the object. First, I actually want to create a camera um, so that we can leave our set position. Then, uh, you're going to just move out select the cube and just go knife tool or line cut and just make a separate object face on here and extrude that just so that um, it can hit the head just so it knocks the head um, so that's yeah it's it's easy as that to fix it's really no fancy details or anything so now the head is being knocked off and shattered just like the rest of the body and the legs automatically collapse as well under the weight of other pieces knocking them over so that's that for shattering so we've got a pretty good shatter and it's pretty fancy yeah there we go to zoom in there see the face shattering get a nice render uh, but you notice that the aren't basically all the pieces are the same size everywhere um, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to go into Voronoi to sources and I'm going to add a new source point generator. I'm going to change it to normal and I'm going to change the point amount to around 200. Um, now that it's in a normal type, I'm going to move it up on the Y axis, not X, but Y, all the way up to the top of the torso and the head and the neck area so that um, when the cube hits, the top area is going to be um, it's going to have a lot more sh uh, points so that when it shatters it's got little pieces at the top and then it gradually goes down to bigger pieces at the bottom 
adds a bit more of an effect to it um, just so it looks a little better yeah alright so now what we're gonna do is you notice that when the subconscious shatters the pieces just fly everywhere and they don't interact with the walls but we're gonna create some geometry so put in a cube and change the size to suit what you need um, change the scale of it all and then line it up with the geometry around you around your actor um, you're also going to want to put your clean player texture on there like you did with the floor and put it on frontal and put a compositing tag on there and tick compositing background um, so you notice that the wall is actually casting a shadow so go into compositing and turn off cast shadows um, and actually leave receive shadows on um, but I accidentally turned it off, I'll fix that in a second you're going to put dynamics on there as well and turn off um, dynamic the option so that it doesn't actually move anywhere but it does receive um, dynamic effects from the pieces go back into compositing and turn on receive shadows so that it does receive shadows on the wall um, giving it a more realistic result now basically all you have to do is to repeat this step with all your other geometry and then you're done. Um, so I'll skip to that. So we've now created the geometry for the environment, um, lined up everything. It's not exactly accurate, um, but it does definitely give uh, a more realistic effect to it because all the pieces are interacting with the environment and casting shadows on it. Um, though in this case the floor isn't too accurate and I have left some walls out. Uh, but it's alright. Now you may also notice that the walls are reflecting the pieces for some reason. Um, that's definitely not what happens in real life. So you're going to go into, well, for some walls in this case. Um, so you're going to go into the texture tag for the clean plate and turn off reflectance so that it doesn't reflect the pieces. Uh, in case of, in terms of uh, your actor's texture, you can leave it on. I left it on for more shiny metal effect even though it's an actor still it gives it a cool effect to it but you can turn that off as well you can even turn on transparency or any texture t um, tag you want to um, so that's basically it for the effect um, in the film you may notice that the pieces rise up to the ceiling I basically just went into simulate up the top and then gravity and change the gravity so that the gravity went upwards instead of downwards and that's basically all you have to do um, but then you go into render settings if you want to and be prepared to render it out um, you can put I put motion blur onto the scene after um, rendering because it's a lot easier and quicker but otherwise hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and that's it thank you guys for watching